Hey everyone, waiting very impatiently for a, an exciting package to be delivered by FedEx. So, as you can see, it's still winter, pretty cold. And uh, I do have something I can be doing while I'm waiting. When I fitted the passenger seat belt, when I test fitted it to click it in, it was a bit tight and I pulled it hard and I could hear a whirring sound coming from the mechanism. So uh, while we're waiting for spring to return, let's work in the spring return. Sorry. Right, this is my passenger side seat belt mechanism. As you can see, there's no tension there at all until you pull it out a bit there. But that's as far in as it goes, and that's a little bit excessive. I know exactly what's wrong, because I already took this apart. I was trying to remove all this pre-tension stuff because I don't need it. And in doing so, I removed this cover, broke the top, took that off. The spring hit me in the face. Luckily, I had uh, eye protection on. But uh, when I put it back together, the glue didn't hold. So I know that behind that, there's a coil spring that is no longer coiled. So I'll take this over to the bench, put it in the vise so that I've got two hands on this. I don't want to be holding this while I'm trying to coil this spring back in. And uh, you'll get to see what's going on inside there and how your seatbelt is supposed to retract. More than that. So let's go over there. So there's all sort of writing on there. It's uh, it's in German, so it probably says, please open, extremely safe inside. That's what I'm thinking, because I didn't take German. So let's try and get this cover off. As I say, I've already tried to glue it back on, so I need to try and get that glue off. I guess the glue wasn't very good. I need to use a stronger glue next time. Or I could just buy a new seatbelt mechanisms, but where's the fun in that? Now, I can't just take this off. I need to be careful because although the spring has lost its uh, tension, it's still going to be, have a bit of tension in it. So you need to be careful when you, when you take this cover off because it will want to spring out. Now, can you see this section here? There's a little... folded section that should be folded all the way around and it actually hooks over there that section there so that's come off and it's the only reason there's any spring left is it was jammed against itself so i need to coil this round again i need to i need to bend this section back to a u-shape i don't know if you can see that it's kind of l-shaped at the moment it should be u-shaped and of course I don't have any pliers with me. So that was a stupid... Oh, see what I mean about the spring thing? But don't panic. You can still push it back in. But you do have to keep your finger across all the way. Oh, I should also point out, this is kind of greased and it's razor sharp, like cheese wire. So that adds even more fun to the game. Right, I need to coil it back somewhere reasonable for now so that I can at least... Get a pair of pliers. Oh, I'm making it worse. Um, wonder if that hammer will stop it from jumping out. Stay. I've got a pair of pliers so once I've got it at the right tension I can I can close that little u-shape and hook it back on where it's supposed to go okay bear with me I might fast forward this section because it might take me a while
Okay, I am going to stop it there because the reason that it didn't work the last time I tried to repair it, I actually overcoiled it and it had reached its maximum tension. And then when I pulled it really hard, it, it tore out this little uh, lug, lug, catch, whatever, bendy bit. So that, close that up a wee bit more. Hooks over there, so it comes out of this slot here, goes around there, and hooks over that one. Make sure you're constantly holding the tension down, or it will just spring out. I've closed it too much. God. Like so. So now you have to put the cover back on. Maybe just unwind it a little bit. It's still going to have the same tension. I just want it to be a bit more even, evenly spaced. See how it's trying to jump out constantly? You can actually feed the belt back in now. That's more like it, I think. Because I want to, I want to leave enough room for the belt to go up to the top mount and then down to the bottom. That should be about right there. So we're going to put the cover back on, and hopefully this time, <laughs> I'll get that. Hopefully this time it will stay where I put it. But I will need to use a stronger glue because the top catch is actually broken off. So I'm not going to let go of that because the spring will throw that out. So I will get a little clamp. Actually, I'll just put it in the base and I'll glue the top. I just need to glue this round here. But the glue I used before obviously wasn't strong enough. Now, before you all start panicking, I'm not relying on glue to keep my seatbelt working, okay? The glue is just to keep the plastic cap covering the coil spring so that if anything does happen to the spring, it doesn't pop out. Now, the reason it failed before was I hadn't adjusted that coil spring correctly and it was only going halfway in tension and then it got stuck because it was at full coil tightness. So I pulled it too hard and it bent that thing open and then it uncoiled. So don't worry about the glue. So let's do a little test while the glue is drying. This is how much distance I've now got free. So the top joint goes up to the, the shoulder and then it will get pulled down that way. Okay, and then I've got this much excess now, which is fine because it has to go from the top and then down to the anchor point at the bottom of the chair. So that looks about right. So from that point, it would then go diagonally across. So I think we're good there. Talking about good, I just got a delivery. I'm so excited. Let's go see what I got. Can you guess what it is yet? So if you've been watching my test drive videos, you will notice that I don't go very far in the car because I'm paranoid about it overheating because I'm using a tiny little $50 radiator, which is designed for a small Honda. But uh, I was only ever going to use that for testing purposes, but the temperature was always in the red. So I've been saving up for this. And with your help and all those annoying adverts that you're forced to watch, I've saved up enough to get myself the proper radiator so let's unbox it's like christmas again love it looks to be pretty well packaged 
I will uh, provide a link to where I got this from. Uh, I think it was California it came from. I think it might even have been a place called Ontario, California. Uh, as I say, I think it was the uh, Leadfoot Racing, the company. Paranoid, I don't want to drop it. Well packaged though, eh? <laughs> oh yes, come on baby. So, this is a 34-36 Chevy radiator. You won't believe the price this was. You can start guessing the price, I might not tell you. No, I will tell you, that would be cruel. Oh, look at that shiny goodness. get the, the box back up to lay it on. No, I'll just use this. Isn't that delicious? Look how thick that is. Put it this way, the one I've got in the car is like that size and maybe half as thick. Perfect. The bracket is even sloped because the grill in this car is sloped, so it will sit. Uh, it will sit about that angle. Comes with a radiator cap. Comes with uh, it's it's spaced and sized for a V8 conversion, so it's got the center the center outlet, or is that the intake? Whatever. It's centered for the like the Chevy V8, which is kind of in the middle, and the lower outlet, which is perfect because that's where my water pump leads to. It goes down that way and round, and transmission cooler as well. Absolutely brilliant! I'm so excited. What difference this is going to make to the drive and the cooling? Got a little. Uh, Petcock valve. So how much do you think this was? This was 214 American dollars. That's a good price, right? And I looked up reviews, they seem to be pretty good, pretty reliable. <sighs> Happy days, what can I say? Now, it's not gonna be an easy fit. But I knew that in advance, so I'll take you to the front of the car and show you why this is not just a, a simple swap over job. Behold my teeny tiny radiator. You see it there? I know it's small, it's hard to miss. I mean, it's not hard, it is, whatever. The new radiator is going to come from about there all the way down to there. I'm going to get twice as much coverage and it's twice as thick. Right, so why is it not going to be an easy fix? Well, for a start, I installed this. If you can see through there, there's a sort of surplus to requirements cross member going across there. I can cut that out. Okay, that's not a problem. I've got a good solid Crown Vic cross member. That was, that was really just to keep the car straight while I was installing the, the cross member. The problem is that... Um, these are attached to that. So I will need to fabricate something else for both them and for the bumpers when I get around to doing it. But that's not all the problem. Again, if you've been watching previous videos, you will have noticed there's a big gap here. Okay. Now, I didn't fix that gap because I knew there was no point until I got the proper radiator. Once I get the proper radiator in, then that whole thing can come back a bit. But also because that is gapped there, this is also sitting too far forward. 
and I had to make these plates to just extend the running boards. So they need, well, hopefully I'll just have to take them off. The original holes are still underneath that. Inside, I need to remove my overflow tank. I need to, I don't even know if that fan is going to be big enough. It should be, but uh, the fan is the least of my worries. It's not too expensive. And I hope that hose is going to be the right size. Bottom one's a flexi, one of those chrome flexi metal ones. I can make that fit, but it does have to go down a lot further, maybe like 10 inches further down. So I may have to get another flexi hose down there. And then obviously the brackets to attach on the inside. So it's not a simple job. But hey, it's not like I'm going anywhere, so I've got plenty of time to do it. Before I start, I might take the car out and reverse it in so that the front of the car is up the front near the workbench. Ah, joy, joy. Well, that should keep me busy for the next week or so. As long as I get it ready in time for spring and start go cruising. Need to buy more coolant as well, I suppose. Ah, it's due an oil change and a full service. Right, I'm going to wait for that glue to dry for the seatbelt, put that back on. And then tomorrow I will get started with the new killing system. Brilliant. Right, I will supply a link to the where I bought that from. It wasn't an eBay job, proper company down in the United States. So check that out. C couldn't be happier with the service. I ordered it on... I think it was Thursday and it's here on Monday. Fantastic. And the shipping wasn't too... No, the shipping was bad. Total price to Canada for me was about $420. I know, shocking. There's customs and there's duty and admin fees and all that kind of stuff. But still, $420 for the exact radiator I want. Not bad at all. Now, if you're in the States, you probably do free local delivery. Well, when I say local, you know, mainland United States. Right, enough. Enough, it's freezing. I need to get the car reversed in, get it prepped for surgery. Thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, thanks for supporting my channel. I couldn't have bought it without you. So, take care. Back to work for me.